By 4 p.m., the vocal coaches are also adding to the anxiety as they ask for nothing less than perfection, especially the vocal coach from hell. on the stage in front of all those people. I'm going to be laying in my bed watching you just croak. But perhaps Peggy's most valuable lesson was her philosophy on teamwork. Bury her on stage. Tap right dance on her tongue. I think you don't know what you're doing. Make me a liar. Show me that you know. And I will eat crow happily. Rehearsals were tough, especially for Lauren. I had lost my voice a little, you know, but I, and I was out of my element very much so. so tell, 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 ooh, this tell, is not gonna work. Now. Okay, who are you supposed to be looking at? You. Why are we still working on this stupid one part? Because of me. What you don't do is listen. Do not, not sing it. Yes, now sing it again. Sing it again. Will you still love? Me? Girl? Hello? There's no crying in music. What's that tears? No, I don't. These aren't tears of sadness. They're tears of me needing to focus and get myself together. Okay, are you on riddling? No, I'm not on riddling. Okay, then focus. Wake up and smell the coffee. Hey everybody, I'm Josh Skinner from withjosh.com and AINow.org. With me is the most talked about lady from American Idol last week. Her name is Peggy Blue. Ryan Seacrest called her the most... <laughs> there, you actually got a lot of comments last week, but you were called the vocal coach from hell. Um, before we get into the experience and everything we didn't see on American Idol, when you were sitting back last week watching your episode and they stop and they call you the vocal coach from hell. What is the first thing that went through your mind? Oh my god! Really? Mm -hmm. Did Were you, at that moment, did you kind of feel like, oh my god, I'm on a reality show and it's all about the editing and they're going to make me look like a bitch? Or? Um, I did think, oh my god, it, 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 that's when it hit me for the first time that it is actually a reality show. Right. I didn't think that they were, they, whoever they are, because I don't even know who did it, were going to make me look like anything, and especially not the B word, right. but... Because I've known you for a really long time, and, and that's, some, that's a word that I would never, ever, ever describe you as, because I knew... I'm, I'm, I know that I'm, I'm, I don't mean to cut you off, but I know that I am emphatic right. about my work. Right. I don't call that being... A bitch. No. I know that I'm. I don't play, and I don't like people who play right. when it comes to working. You take it very seriously. I, it's extremely. It is extremely serious with me. Well, I have some quotes that uh, a lot of blogs were quoting you on. I just want to go through them. Okay. Um, you f were quoted. It was on TV saying okay. you're going to die on stage in front of all these people. Mm -hmm. I don't. <laughs> I think you don't know what you're doing. Make me a liar. Show me that you know, that you and know. I'll eat crow happily. Yeah, okay. and I will. <laughs> and a lot of people, America was like, oh my God, this Peggy Blue lady who we don't know who she is, she's yelling at two 15-year-old girls. Okay. Where, did you feel like you were yelling at no. them? No, here's what. And, and, tell and, and tell like me said, what happened. Tell me what we didn't see. Um, this, is your, this is your platform. Here's what. I wasn't yelling at two 15-year-old girls. Okay. The one that was getting yelled at was Melinda. Right. Uh, Tia, when, here's what happens when, when they walked through the room. First two seconds. Mm -hmm. We hug, we meet, we say hello. Now it's time to work. Matt Rohde, the piano, piano right. player and arranger with me and my teammate. I say to Matt, I need just a second. He goes, take your time. I say to Tia... Explain to me your song. Tell me what the song is about. Right. This little girl 
said, oh, sure. And she ran it top to bottom. She told me everything about that song, which meant to me, okay, you've really studied. You've done your homework. You know what you came here to do. Right. And waste time isn't one of those things. I turned to the other one and said, now you tell me, well. Melinda. Uh, Melinda, if you didn't know, maybe you should have copied Tia. Right. In the meantime, she's chewing gum. And when I said to her, okay, now tell me what you think of the song, she looked at me and said, she, she basically, did you feel like, ring. did you feel like that was rude? Feel like, of course it's rude. Right. And I don't care if you're three, it's rude. And you know better. You should know better. And I said, okay, so you have you studied anything about the song? You know nothing about the Beatles. It, it, okay, I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned if you don't know who the Beatles are. You should. Right. Everybody should because that's a teaching tool. The Beatles and all the music prior to that up to, say, 1988 is a teacher, teaching tool. Right for youngsters. The fact that you are going to sing a Beatles song and you did not take those lyrics the night before you showed up to me. So you felt that her preparation was completely No off preparation balance. at all. Really? None. She was just... She was there. Melinda was she just... She was in a moment and she, she was just there. But completely not present. No, not present. For the biggest audition of her life. And I said to her, there are thousands of girls who would slit their wrist to be standing where you are. You are not taking, you're not giving respect, first of all, to the Beatles. Mm -hmm. You're not giving respect to the artistry mm -hmm. and the art of music, nor are you respecting yourself. Because if you could, and I said to her, is that what you do in your classroom when you're in school and your teacher says to you, explain to me what that is on the board? Do you stand there, pop gum, and look at your teacher and not answer? Because it's not allowed in here. You know, Tia is, this little girl is so focused. She's in the top 25. Yeah. Five of my kids are, thank God. Uh, because they listened. They heard me. And, and it's not all about me. Believe right. it or not, I'm not a me, 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 me person. But they were focused. That little girl is focused. She has also done the Apollo, Tia. Right. So she knew. And she just kept everything I said to her. She was like a little sponge. She looked at me when I spoke to her. She looked at Matt when he spoke to her. So you love her? Yeah. yeah. I love Melinda, too. Okay. I don't dislike that little girl. She's a but, kid. How but do you see how America, what they were watching on American Idol, it okay, seems well, a little Okay, get far. over it really fast. Yeah. Everybody get over it, take a beat, and breathe. Why, 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 not, do, why do they need to get over it? Get over it because I'm working. Right. I'm in a working situation. So you were trying I was to push hired, that. I was hired. We're talking about an American idol here. Mm -hmm. Not somebody who is in a school play. So if you're on a show that is this big, it's the biggest show running on television at the moment, mm -hmm. and you want to, to be this thing here, it's a whole, you know, it's not just, well, I get up and I go someplace and sing. This is an American idol. This is planetary stuff. You're trying to find a superstar. You want a superstar. So it with that comes a certain amount of discipline, mm -hmm. atmosphere on your person. Respect. Respect, definitely. And the first order of business, see, because people call this show business, my motto is, this is the business of show. First word is business. I was there to do business. I thought you were. So therefore, if you want to be this, then you got to come and give it. you got to give it all you've got. you got to be quit. So you don't think it was personal at all? Oh, no, it wasn't personal to me. Yeah. I was doing what I was hired to do. And I was told that I did the right thing. I would have done it had it been. I did it to my daughter. Well, what did you think when people were calling you the next Simon Cowell and that oh, people no. were just up and I'm then I'm not a next more. anything. I'm not a next anything. I'm only a me. And everybody, the one thing that you learn in this whole life is everybody is not going to like you. Mm -hmm. There was maybe one person in your entire life who will really say they love you and really mean it. So I'll take that one. You know, it's okay. Don't You don't have to like me. But here's what. 
I do know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. When I do that, I'm trying to give you 50 years of stuff that I've learned from my teachers. Honey, let me tell you something. Where I come from in New York, if those children, some of these children who are out now and who are, and I quote and I use the word sparingly, stars, mm -hmm. if they had come up with the mentors and the teachers and the people who I came up with, and I'll give you one example, George Faison. Yeah, wow. Darling, they would run away slitting their wrists. And the other one is Carl Hall. He did not play. And no, I had sung things to that little girl ten times. We only had an hour with those kids. What didn't we see? Like, take me you to... You didn't see me gr holding on to her when, when I thought that I had hurt her feelings. Mm. I wasn't out to hurt her feelings. I needed to shake her a little bit, shake her up a little bit inside, and get her to really focus. But she wasn't focused. She didn't do anything she was asked to do. Right. She did nothing that Matt asked her. She didn't do it. She couldn't. Why? Eat. Why did? Why she wasn't focused. Okay. Do you think it was just too much for her? I don't know. Maybe it was at her age. Maybe I don't know. You know. But then I had the, the other one, J.C., the little boy, who I told, if you mess that up again, I might just knock you out. And he went. <laughs> Because <laughs> he knew yeah. that I really wanted him to get it. Because you were pushing them because you wanted them to be the best. I really want them to be the best. And you were, you had the most uh, students in the top 24, correct? You had five out of everybody. Uh, well, yeah, but I don't know whether that's the most. <laughs> I don't know. But well, let's I, just pretend. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but five of mine made it through, and I'm just through. And maybe they won't be in the top 12, but to be in the top 12... Let me tell you something, that's a big deal for Idol. What did and the no, I'm not, not the next Simon Cowell. Don't get it. Oh, hey folks. Well, I guess that about sums up the American Idol group rounds in Las Vegas. I thought it was a complete snooze fest. It's like they took the group rounds from Hollywood, sucked the fun out of them, and then shipped them off to Las Vegas. Where's the drama? Where's the sometimes relevant song choices? All of that was missing, so I thought it was completely boring. I officially hate this round. 50s and 60s music? I hated it. So we're just going to discuss the highlights of the show. Let's start with everybody's favorite vocal coach from hell, Miss Peggy Blue. It was so nice to see her back, wasn't it? I wish they would give her a permanent position on the show. I mean, well, we know they'll never make her a judge. She's not famous enough. They seem to forget that uh, nobody had ever heard of Randy Jackson. Everybody thought he was from the Jackson 5 or Ryan Seacrest or Simon Cowell. Only Paula Abdul was famous before uh, American Idol started, and she hadn't had a hit in quite some time. So the show has, they, they've forgotten that the show is supposed to make stars. The stars are not supposed to make the show, but whatever. Anyway, uh, yeah, these contestants need somebody like Peggy Blue that isn't afraid to scare the crap out of them. I think she would be perfect. At, at the judges' table. Of course, we know deep down she's just a pussycat. She softened up to Heejun Han, but it would be almost impossible not to, wouldn't it? Who doesn't love Heejun? Initially, Heejun was uh, really afraid of her because he had looked her up on YouTube and saw how evil she was. But she wasn't evil to him. She was evil to Lauren Gray, though. Lauren needed it, though. She, I mean, she, she thought she was going to boo-hoo her way through it. But as Peggy so eloquently pointed out, there is no crying in music. Well, apparently Lauren was upset because she was sick and losing her voice. Or, that was her excuse. Anyway, personally, I've always thought she sounded like she was on the verge of losing her voice. Anyway, uh, I think it's because she screams her songs. Learn to scale it back sometimes, sweetheart. You won't wear it out. One person I would have loved to see Peggy coach, though, is that hateful old cowboy, Richie Law. He wouldn't even take the advice of expert vocal coach Deborah Bird, because he, he says he's not there to recycle music. He's there to make it. When you make what? An ass of yourself? Well, bravo, then. Have these judges make up their minds or replace them with Peggy Blue. Get her after these judges. Maybe she could straighten them out. I don't know. I'll see you folks later. Hey folks, well, I guess that about sums up the American Idol group rounds in Las Vegas.
I thought it was a complete snooze fest. It's like they took the group rounds from Hollywood, sucked the fun out of them, and then shipped them off to Las Vegas. Where's the drama? Where's the sometimes relevant song choices? All of that was missing, so I thought it was completely boring. I officially hate this round. It's part of the reason it's taken me so long to come on here and talk about it. And today, we're not going to discuss every single performance because it would just be pointless. 50s and 60s music, I hated it. So we're just going to discuss the highlights of the show. Let's start with everybody's favorite vocal coach from hell, Miss Peggy Blue. It was so nice to see her back, wasn't it? I wish they would give her a permanent position on the show. I mean, well, we know they'll never make her a judge. She's not famous enough. They seem to forget that uh, nobody had ever heard of Randy Jackson. Everybody thought he was from the Jackson Five, or Ryan Seacrest, or Simon Cowell. Only Paula Abdul was famous before uh, American Idol started, and she hadn't had a hit in quite some time. So, the show has—they've they, forgotten that the show is supposed to make stars. The stars are not supposed to make the show, but whatever. Anyway, yeah, these contestants need somebody like Peggy Blue that isn't afraid to scare the crap out of them. I think she would be perfect at, at the judges' table. Of course, we know deep down she's just a pussycat. She softened up to Hee Jun Han, but it would be almost impossible not to, wouldn't it? Who doesn't love Hee Jun? Initially, Hee Jun was uh, really afraid of her because he had looked her up on YouTube and saw how evil she was. But she wasn't evil to him. She was evil to Lauren Gray, though. Lauren needed it, though. She, I mean, she, she thought she was going to boo-hoo her way through it. But as Peggy so eloquently pointed out, there is no crying in music. Well, apparently Lauren was upset because she was sick and losing her voice. Or, that was her excuse. Anyway, personally, I've always thought she sounded like she was on the verge of losing her voice. Anyway, uh, I think it's because she screams her songs. Learn to scale it back sometimes, sweetheart. You won't wear it out. One person I would have loved to see Peggy coach, though, is that hateful old cowboy, Richie Law. He wouldn't even take the advice of expert vocal coach Deborah Bird, because he, he says he's not there to recycle music, he's there to make it. Wait, make what, an ass of yourself? Well, bravo then, you're doing a great job of that. The other contestants hate Richie so much that nobody would let him in their group, so he teamed up with fellow deep-voiced misfit Jermaine Jones for a duet of Make It Easy On Yourself, and surprisingly, they did a great job with it. It was actually my favorite performance of the night. I don't know, I think maybe they should do that in the Vegas rounds. If they're going to have a Vegas rounds, which feel, really feels because the judges are into, so indecisive that they don't know who to send through, um, if they're going to have a Vegas round, maybe they should team them up into duets. I mean, there's only 70 people. 35 duets wouldn't take that long. And it would be something more relevant than to what they're going to do when they uh, actually head out into their career. I mean, they're not going to team up with four other people and sing a song, but they might team up with one. So I would rather see duets. I still hate Richie, though, and I can't wait to see him cut. Uh, I just hate that better than everybody else attitude that he has. Another contestant that thinks they're better was Gabby Karuba. She thought she was the glue that held her group together, but she was afraid she wouldn't get an opportunity to shine on her own in that song, and she wants to be the girl getting standing ovations. I got news for you, Gabby Karuba. If these judges aren't already standing up fawning over you, they aren't ever going to. You want a standing ovation? Oh, standing ovation. Who the hell does she think she is? Reed Grimm? The judges already have their favorites, and it's obvious that Gabby is not one of them. She did survive the group, but they sent her packing by the end of the show. Britney Spears Jr. also got cut by the end of the show. She didn't understand why either, since she thought every performance was perfect. Um, and if the performances that we've seen from her are her ideas of perfection, then there's the problem. She thinks she's better than she really is. Not only that, but you don't have to be a genius to know that a girl that looks just like Britney Spears, and her name is Britney, is never going to make it that far on American Idol, or in the music business, really, at all. Another casualty of Vegas that we all saw coming from miles away was Colton Dixon's sister, Skylar. <laughs> well, you know, initially she was going to audition by herself, and they dragged Colton in to audition, too, and pretty much ignored her at the audition, so we knew that she was just they were just stringing her along so they could drag him to the, uh, to Vegas. If they had cut her before, they, I guess maybe they were afraid he would leave, but uh, so he was pretty upset about her. He pretended to be pretty upset, but, you know, he was happy that he made it anyway. So, but of course, he made it last year, and she got cut in Hollywood, I believe it was. Uh, but we all knew that they were just stringing her along. Poor thing went in as Skylar Dixon and uh, ended up Colton Dixon's sister. She's been reduced. Uh, let's see, what was another highlight of the show? Oh, I finally got to see my husband, Prince Johnny Keezer, without his shirt on. And then they cut him. That made me so sad. I feel like a widow. Well, they, they're, they're taking away my eye candy. Which of the guys am I going to look at now? Creighton Fraker? Elise Testo? No, thanks. So I was pretty sad about that, but uh, 
Let's see, what were some other highlights of the show? DeAndre Brackensick, we finally got to see some singing from him. I thought he was fantastic, and they've been hiding him pretty much all season. Well, you see glimpses of him here and there, and, and we know he almost made it last season, and they inexplicably cut him. But I think he's got better, although I do want to take some sheep shears to that head. Well, it is very nice hair, but all that flipping is just so unnecessary. Another contestant that, from last year that we haven't got to see yet is Holly Cavanaugh. We keep seeing little glimpses of her, so I knew she's still there, but they won't ever show her singing. Hopefully this week we'll get to hear from her. We finally got to see one of my favorites, Scott Dangerfield, who uh, I love him on YouTube, and uh, so I was really excited to see him. He auditioned, he auditioned last year and then uh, didn't go to Hollywood, uh, but this year he went, and so I've been seeing glimpses of him too here and there, and finally we got to see him, and... Uh, I was a little bit disappointed. I thought his group was, it kind of felt like a bunch of drunk guys at a costume party. It was just kind of boring to me. Of course, all the performances were boring to me. I thought this round was completely pointless. You know, I think the problem is they send too many people to Hollywood, and then they're too indecisive in Hollywood. It used to be the judges would have, you know, that you have the first round in Hollywood, then the group rounds, and then the last rounds, and then that was it. And so when people came to the live shows. It was kind of a leap of faith. You didn't know if they were going to be nervous. You didn't know if they were going to uh, mess up, but but it was going to be interesting. Well, by the time these judges are done with them, we've they've already seen them six times, so the contestants know how to butter up the judges. They know what the judges are going to love, so they just go on the show to please the judges, and it's kind of, uh, uh, well, the talent may be stronger, but there's no contrast, and, and uh, it's just standing ovations for everybody, so I think they maybe should think about just scaling it back. Have these judges make up their minds or replace them with Peggy Blue. Get her after these judges. Maybe she could straighten them out. I don't know. But anyway, so yeah, that was it. This week we'll end up with a top 24 and I can't wait. I've already read the spoilers, but I hope there's a surprise or two. Uh, I remember, because remember last year, I think, uh, J.C. Badeau was in the spoilers like right up until the last day. And then in season nine, uh, Crisco Lightly, old orphan boy, he was in the spoilers too, and he actually was in the top 24, but then they cut him at the last minute and put Tim Urban in. So, well, I might, hey, those of you that have read the spoilers, uh, I, don't, I still hold out hope for surprises. I'll see you folks later. Tall and tan and young and handsome, the boy for me, when he muggles walking and when he passes, each girl he passes goes. He walks his like a somber Since starting her career in New York theaters before the age of 18, she has worked with Stephanie Mills in The Wiz, Morgan Freeman, Luther Vandross, Quincy Jones, Burt Bacharach, and Linda Hopkins.